How's it going? It's Charles Bowen. So today we are going to be discussing something that I thought of on the train. And I thought of it actually on the way to the train because I just, I literally walk throughout the city, New York City, like totally different than anyone else. I literally walk around very present, very just in in the mood or, or in the moment. And, and it's really weird. You know, a lot of people are looking down and they're in their thoughts and they're just, they know obviously where they started, where they're going, and that's just what they're doing. And I was actually discussing this with my mom. I'm like, it's scary and it, and it actually frightens me how many people, even, t- even today, you know, I could see it maybe 100 years ago when life was pretty hard and in 200 years where, where life is even harder, where it was, it was really survival two, 300, 400 years ago, let alone 1,000 years ago when it was pure survival. But today, when you literally can get whatever you want, you can, like, you can call anyone at any time. And you can, you can email anyone. You can, you can have a conversation with anyone in the entire world that also has one of these devices. And it doesn't even have to be this one. And... I'm like, you know how many people walk around the city just blah, eh, uh. and I'm like, y- you're literally going throughout your life just not enjoying it, and whether you like your job or not, and I understand there's tough times, but you don't want to look back and just say, how did I spend my free time? And literally, that's what today's video is about. How do, how do you spend your free time? What do you do during your free time? Seriously. Let's talk about my free time and and maybe you can relate to it. Maybe you can't. So I wake up. I now now have a habit starting today. (laughs) I used to have the habit and now I'm restarting the habit. Is uh, not looking at my phone until I get to work. I am not looking at my phone. It's on airplane mode, and I don't look at it until I get to work. And you're thinking, well, what if I need to send an email? Well, then why don't you get to work half an hour earlier because I'm telling you right now, if you don't look at your phone, you do two things. You don't worry about anything that's, that may have gone wrong at night. You're not worrying about something that you forgot about at night that you have to do during the day. And that's all worry. You know, you, you need you need a... You need at least two hours, an hour and a half of from when you get up to when you get to work to be fun, excited, uh, enthusiastic. Because if you wake up and you immediately start worrying, that, that, that makes your whole day. So I wake up. I don't look at my phone. Immediately, how do you spend your free time? For me, I, I don't have a TV in my apartment. And I'm not saying like I'm this wonderful, like, wow, you should model me. It's just, I've noticed through, gosh, seven years of just doing things that don't work and doing things that do work. And this is, and I'm obviously refining it each and every single day to be better. But this is fantastic, is that you wake up, you put on something that's positive, uplifting, Put on, don't put on the news. It's how you, fr- you spend your free time is how successful you're going to be. If you don't have a lot of s- free time, it depends what you do in that free time. If you, if you major in minor things during your free time, Facebook, Amazon.com, Twitter, Instagram, uh, cable TV, which is terrible for you. I can make a whole video about that. But I wake up. Put on something positive. For me this morning, it was um, Life Mastery, I think it is. I don't know. I, I got it four or five years ago. It was sitting on my desktop, and I'm like, well, why don't I just put it on? It's Life Mastery by Tony Robbins, and he's talking about asking better questions and, and your mood and metaphors and things like that, and you're literally going like, wow. I can, that's, and obviously I've, I've made a video that you have to be open to this, you know, listen, this is what I like, this is what I enjoy, you know, you could put on classical music, you could put on 
I don't know, someone that's talking about dentistry, if you're a dentist or, or, or a TED Talk. You know, it doesn't have to be, I'm just saying put on something positive and I'm relating it to what I'm doing. So I put on Tony, I go in the shower, I have a little speaker, I think it's a UA, I don't know, I forgot the name of it, but it's a, it's a Bluetooth speaker, so my phone is outside the shower, or outside, it's actually in my living room, and it's not waterproof, but there's an area that I could put the speaker, put the speaker there, and I'm listening to it there, I get out, I move the speaker, I bring it upstairs, and throughout the entire time, two things are happening. One is that you're not subjecting yourself to crappy negative news, to crappy uh, negative news talk, radio, anything like that. Number two is you're already stimulating your mind. You're already getting your mind ready. It's already like waking up. And the other thing is that you feel good that you're doing this. And it's funny, whether you learn something or not, obviously you want to learn and then apply it. But for me, when I wake up and, and I have the, the discipline to put on that instead of music or something like that, sometimes I put on music. If I'm in a bad mood or I'm, you know, I don't know, hungover or something or I'm just not in the mood to hear Tony or a TED Talk or, or a, I don't know, a YouTube video, I put on music like good, you know, Good kind of, I like club music. <laughs> so I put on club music. And then I went, I had to pick up my laundry. I put in my headphones instead of walking. Usually, and, and I'm against the headphones, but I was really into what Tony was saying, so I wanted to bring him with me <laughs> to pick up my laundry and I walked back. I got on the subway. I got on the subway to go to work. For you, you know, you've already, you, you've done what I've done. You know, you've woken up, you've taken a shower, you've eaten breakfast, you probably went to the gym, maybe hopefully went to the gym. Um, what are you listening? What are you doing during, during that time? This is the most important thing. Everyone has a commute to work, whether it's a car, it's walking, it's biking, it's a subway for me, or it's a train, Amtrak, Metro North, what are you doing on that train? Seriously, what are you doing on that train? It's unbelievable. I used to take the Long Island Railroad when I lived at my parents' house out of college, and I actually had a, a stint back there between apartments. And I would take the Long Island Railroad. I took it for three months. It was so depressing. I'm like, I cannot wait to move back into the city because it was so depressing. People, you just see their dreams are just crushed. And I'm not saying everybody, you know, there's someone on the Long Island Railroad that's watching this right now. But seriously, <laughs> what are you doing? What, you're taking a 45 minute commute and you, all you're doing is just sitting there looking out the window. Dude, educate yourself. So th what stimulated this video was that I was walking to the subway and this guy, he had the book Unbroken. I don't have it with me right now. Um, I think I actually, I have it at home. But he has the book Unbroken. The book on Broken is amazing. It's by a woman named Laura Hildebrand. It's about, uh, about a, and I, and I read this probably two and a half, three years ago, and I still remember very vividly, and I, I think actually, what's her name, did a, a documentary, I'm getting the chills. Uh, Angelina Jolie is doing a movie about it. It's a guy named Louis Zamperini, and he was a, an Olympian, signed up for the war, World War II, Crashed the plane, was a POW in Japan, in the South Pacific, and it was just a, probably 400 pages. I read it in three days. I read it in a weekend. And at the end of it, I was crying. I was like, this is unbelievable. It's like, when you read books like that that are profound in your spare time, what do you do in your spare time? When you read books like that, you're like, wow, my life isn't that hard. My life is actually a piece of cake compared to being beaten in a POW camp in an enemy territory during World War II. It's not even now where there's some kind of ethics. Back then it was like, no, we hate each other. And you got beaten and you, they didn't give a crap if you died. And you read that and you're like, wow. Like, okay, I have nothing to complain about. So I'm going to the subway. I see this guy actually holding the book and I'm like, 
Dude, that's awesome. Like, great book. You know, shout it out. If, if during my spare time I didn't read that, I would have forgot. I wouldn't have forgot about the book, but it reminded me again of it. So during my spare time, read that book. Reminded me, dude, great day out. Life could be worse. And actually, Louis Zamperini just passed away. Uh, I think in 2013, 2014, in his 90s. You know, he was the most positive guy. Which also remind yourself if you're positive. And obviously there's other things you have to exercise, eat well, but your mind literally controls your body. And there's a book, I Am the Placebo, I think that's what it's called, I want to read it. And essentially, I don't want to get into it. But, so, I see that book and it reminds me, during this guy's spare time, he's reading an amazing book, Unbroken, highly recommended by Laura Hildebrand about Louis Zamperini. Got into the subway, sat, uh, was standing, started, I just got this book, A Better, uh, Better Way to Live, and it's uh, by a guy I've actually never heard of, Oj Medino, Medino, o- OG, the original OG, <laughs> but essentially, um, I started reading it, the next stop came up, you know, a bunch of people got off, I sat down. And I looked around when I sat down, because I get on and I, I immediately, I just started, so I just, I'm really excited. You know, this one's pretty short. It's only 120 pages. It's actually a pretty small font. Um, probably take me two, three days to read it. And then I move on to another one of his books, which is The Greatest Salesman in the World. So I'm looking forward to this guy. I never heard of him. And uh, apparently he has a bunch of New York Times bestsellers. So as, I'm, as I stop reading and I'm sitting down at the seat on the subway, I look around and some people are looking at me, some people are not. And I think people are very interested in what I'm reading. They're not interested in me, but they're interested in what people are reading. And I started then looking around at what people were doing. And people were on the subway before me. And this is an express train, which means that it's probably a, at least a 15, 20 minute commute for most people. It could be a 10 minute commute. But they were just sitting there on a train getting to their destination. Like, what are you doing during your spare time? If you don't like your job, read about fitness. If you don't like your job and your relationship sucks, read about relationships. If your job sucks, and you want to get a new one, read about a job that you want to get. You know, what are you doing during your spare time? Seriously. When you're cleaning the house, are you just cleaning the house and just thinking about how crappy it is that you're cleaning your house? Are you thinking about how terrible it is that you're doing something that you don't want to do? Like, seriously, what are you doing? You know, put on, put on music. That's, that's uplifting. For me, I was vacuuming. I had my headphones in and I was listening to, I think I was listening to Tony Robbins. Like, you don't have to listen to what I'm listening to. I'm just saying, what are you doing during your spare time? Question what you're doing during your spare time. This, honestly, I made a video yesterday about momentum, and you you literally don't make quantum leaps. I read a book called Quantum Leap, and yes, there are quantum leaps. Just do it. Just sign up and be on TV. But that's, that's a rare breed, and a lot of people want that quick fix. They want that lotto ticket. They want that that 15 minutes. 100 pounds off kind of diet. No, dude, you you need to go to the gym or you need to walk and you need to eat healthy. Pretty straightforward. And if you don't know how to do it, I didn't know how to do it. I started reading about it. I started watching YouTube clips. I'm like, oh, so you're telling me Chipotle is not healthy? Okay, I'm not going to eat it. And people are like, what? I love Chipotle. Okay, that's cool. I'm not saying that. But then also don't get mad when you get sick or don't get mad at, at Chipotle or, or yourself when you can't move because you sh- shove so much crap in your mouth and your body's like, I'm not used to breaking down all these, you know, Chipotle says, you know, it's health. Listen, Chipotle was probably started with health in mind, but they scaled. And when you scale, your quality usually goes down. And, you know, in, in there's only a few cases like Apple that Google that quality doesn't go, go down. That's management, you know. And I'm not saying anything about Chipotle. You know, I just know that every time I have it, I have a 
I'm really tired afterwards. My body's like, we can't give you any energy because we're breaking down the crap that you just put in our mouth or in your mouth. So what are you doing in your spare time? Find something. For me, I'm a single guy and I am essentially doing two things. One is, is reading about how to better myself to find a woman that I like, not a woman that I like, a woman that is interested in me as much as I'm interested in her. Just a, a mutual you know, a symbiotic relationship or whatever you want to call it. So that's number one. So relationship, work, I'm always studying about work because work is health, it's happiness, it's production, it's time management, it's marketing, it's sales, it's everything. So I'm always reading about work and obviously how to better your life. Honestly, find an area that you want to improve, that you're not good at, a relationship, wealth, uh, fitness, health, whatever. It doesn't really matter. Find that area and start reading during your spare time. Honestly, during your spare time is when you, in my opinion, thrive, will thrive. During your spare time is, and I, and I made this conclusion on the train. I'm like, this is the video I'm going to make. What do you do in your spare time? And on the train, I said, during the most successful people know how to use their spare time. The most successful people know how to use their spare time. That's Essentially what I believe. The most successful people know how to use your time. How are you using your spare time? Think about it. Book, audio, whatever the case is. Eliminate the social media or at least dumb it down. Eliminate the the news, Fox, NBC, CNN. It's all garbage. Listen, I was very political. Very political. And I used to have discussions and I used to be angry and, and not like one side and not like these people because they believed in what I didn't believe in or they believed in things that I didn't believe. Listen, it's all garbage. You know, you're, you're going to every there's something new every single day, every single day. They think of something, they ride it out and then there's a new news story and then they ride it out. What are you doing during your spare time? Are you filling it with garbage? That's not going to improve your life. It's not going to improve your relationship. It's not going to improve your health, your wealth, your success. Honestly, what are you doing with your spare time? Anyway, this is Charles Bonston. This is honestly one of the best videos I've done. I just feel really invigorated. So subscribe to the videos. Leave comments about what you're looking for. And I make a video every single weekday. Follow me on Instagram. That's my favorite social media network. And obviously, have an awesome day. Talk to you guys tomorrow.